If you like this series, check out the Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong merchandise, available in the Geek Group store to support us making more episodes. There was a study in late 2015 which revised a lot of what we thought we knew about Stegosaurus. And the authors published it open access, so you should go check it out. There's even a 3D PDF of the skeleton, which I didn't know PDFs could do, but sure, why not? Stegosaurus has always been kind of a weird outlier among the Stegosaurus, not just because it has giant plates all the way down its back rather than spikes or smaller plates, uh, but they have that high arched back, that short little neck, and a really large difference in length between their forelimbs and their hind limbs. So when this new specimen gets described and upends a lot of this weirdness, my reaction was less, whoa, no way, and more, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But that's what good science feels like most of the time, so let's dig into this. Most specimens of Stegosaurus that aren't isolated elements are less than half complete. The few more complete specimens we do have uh, have either preservation or preparation issues that prevent us from getting good 3D reconstructions of them, which is a problem in this, the age of the 3D biomechanical analysis. The authors note that the last full description of the animal was by Gilmore in 1914, which you can also read. So anytime you've seen a full Stegosaurus skeleton mounted or as a diagram, that's a composite meaning there are parts from different specimens adjusted to fit together to approximate a complete skeleton. Doing this comes with some baggage, because even if two sets of bones are from the same species, they've spent millions upon millions of years in the Earth, which transforms fossils. There might have been individual or sexual variation between those individuals before they died. Uh, even if there's a difference in age between them, their proportions are going to be different because animals grow allometrically. So if you don't correct for these issues, you're going to wind up with a very inaccurate reconstruction. Fortunately, paleo workers have knowledge and tools and do correct for these and other issues, and they can check their work against related animals. But in the late 19th century, we only had very fragmentary remains of what we now know are other stegosaurids, so workers really had no guidelines for what this crazy new dinosaur looked like. Which is how we got the single row of plates, or Marsh's early ideas where it looked basically like a pangolin. In the early 20th century, we began finding more complete stegosaurs, but a certain view was becoming fashionable in the paleontological community that dinosaurs were an evolutionary dead end, that they had once been well adapted to their environment, but ultimately they ran out of steam, and instead of changing with the times, they started wasting their energy, growing horns and frills and spikes for display. And because Stegosaurus, restored as this stupid, lethargic creature waiting around for the mammals to supersede it, really just fit with the thinking of the time, there wasn't much impetus to examine Stegosaurus critically until the later part of the 20th century and the dinosaur renaissance when we did start seeing workers reconsider how stegosaurus carried themselves, how they participated in their ecosystem, but even then, the basic proportions of the animal at the skeletal level were still basically where they had been with Gilmore. Until Sophie, which was found in 2003 at Red Canyon Ranch, private dig site in Wyoming, and is now at the Natural History Museum in London. It is a relatively complete specimen of Stegosaurus, finally. It's missing only the hand, parts of many vertebrae, and the base of the tail. It is an immature specimen. Uh, it's no longer a Stegling, but based on the mixture of fused, partially fused, and unfused sutures between bones, uh, the researchers think that it is a subadult or young adult. It is a Stegosaurus stenops, which incidentally replaced Armatus as the type species in 2013 which is relevant to us because that's the same species we did an episode on. It turns out, Stegosaurus have shorter torsos and longer necks than we thought. Uh, that is, there are more cervical vertebrae and fewer dorsal vertebrae. Their rear legs aren't so much monstrously longer than their forelegs. Uh, their tails are a tad longer, with the plates more spaced out along their spines, and their thagomizers are turned downwards, all of which makes it hard to see thagomizers as just being display structures. They would clearly be effective weapons. The most important takeaway from this study going forward is that having a detailed, accurate description of the animal allows researchers to model it for analysis of its biology, 
like this one by the same authors, where they compare a volumetric method of estimating the animal's mass with the more algorithmic method derived from limb bone measurements. The researchers arrive at one and a half tons for Sophie, whereas the bivariate equations are like 1.8 to 2 tons. So maybe Stegosaurus aren't as heavy as we thought, but the main takeaway is that ontogeny of a specimen can wildly change mass estimates if we're relying on limb bone equations, which goes right back to our starting problem that fragmentary remains are sometimes misleading. Overall, like I said, this study brings Stegosaurus in line with our current understanding of Stegosaurs and even dinosaurs as a whole. It's still the Stegosaurus we know and love, it's just, you know, a real animal. I want to thank you for watching Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong. I hope you liked this one-shot follow-up short. I hope to be making more of these in the future. Go to thegeekgroup.org to see how you can become involved with our National Science Institute, and consider supporting the show on Patreon. I will see you next time.